Not bad. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, congratulations. Uh, I, it was a brilliant show and um, I can't wait to see where you guys get up to in uh, season three after such a heartbreaking season two finale. <laughs> yes. I was wondering, it's, it's 10 months on from um, where we saw them. I was wondering if you could, we could start by talking about where we see the characters at the beginning of season three, uh, starting with uh, perhaps you, Annabelle? Yes, well, 10 months on and Nina has been through pregnancy and childbirth and um, and now has a three month old daughter. Um, so we find Nina at the start of motherhood, really, and um, she's, you know, uh, chaotic as usual. She's gone back to work, so she's trying to deal with getting used to this new feeling of love for her child and um then she's she's throwing her in the crash and trying to keep up with her work and um yeah sort of similar levels of chaos but more centered around <laughs> being a mother um and uh gets a lot of help from rose in the, that department because she's very lacking in confidence and um kind of needs well kind of, rose is sort of being her surrogate mother at the beginning of series three <laughs> Not Nina's core as the little girl. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so to, to leap off that, Fiona, where do we find uh, Rose? Yeah, so um, I was just going to say also Nina is still um, alcohol free. Yes, oh yes, good point. Yeah, oh, she's, good okay. thing to, she's still managing to do her, she's still going to AA meetings. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Um, Yes, so Rose, um, with the kind of duality of their experience of um, what motherhood, uh, Rose is dealing with the reality that she's not going to be able to conceive naturally. Um, and they've made the decision. I think that they actually can't, they have like very, very, very low chances of conceiving naturally. So they have made the decision to adopt and uh, James feels very confident with this decision and Rose is really grappling with it um, for lots of reasons. Um, but, you know, I think, as, as I was thinking, we all would when, when faced with adopting some, another child is there's, there's so many questions that that raises and so many um, doubts and fears that you would, that you would have about that. Um, in the same way that you would have doubts and fears about your own pregnancy, but they're slightly different when you're uh, facing, you know, taking on somebody else's child. So I think that's where we find Rose and also, uh, yeah, helping out uh, Nina with, uh, with Cora. So how does that uh, affect the relationship between you two? Because obviously, um, Rose struggling to conceive and going through this whole adoption process whilst also looking after Cora and the new child and um so what's really lovely actually is that the any feelings of jealousy have seemingly evaporated on the birth of Cora and actually I remember when my own niece was born um and I was pregnant at the time with my daughter. And I remember when my niece was born, I remember thinking, God, how am I going to love my own child as much as I love this one? Like, I, I, I really felt so strongly about her. And I think that's the same for Rose. I think uh, family isn't just about your motherhood, isn't just about your own child, right? Like it's, it's it, or parenting isn't about your own child. It's also about, loving other people's children and I think Rose feels blood pregnant. she's she's a Defoe so she's blood <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and so I think she's mainly trying to reassure Nina that she's doing a good job <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nina's pretty, uh under agile Nina <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel yeah their, their usual kind of sisterly like you take the baby she's your baby kind of thing there's that there's a lot of that I mean, I feel that completely. I have a niece and I would easily like impale myself on a sword for her, like yeah. the minute she was born. <laughs> so. yeah. I, think, I think being being an aunt or an uncle is actually almost better. <laughs> yeah, because you don't have full responsibility. I've so got a nephew. You know? yeah. Sleep deprivation, you just have like the love, the special Unfair. relationship. Um, yeah. 
Mm. And you so, get to be so cool. You get to be the coolest. Like right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just, you're you're never cool when you're a mother. Yeah. And it must be interesting because like I find Nina's quite like um a cool, wild child anyway. So then she has to become a mother and effectively ruin her coolness. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ruin her what? Sorry, her coolness. Any any yeah. chance her like wild partying life and everything? Yeah, cause... I think Nina will always find a way. I mean, she's not she's not drinking. I mean, what I love is the fact that d- design wise, that um, Nina's got all the designer baby gear, and there's nothing. She's still in her heels. The baby's got a leopard print <laughs> sling. You know, there is nothing dowdy about Nina's mothering she she's sort of incorporated Cora into her life rather than the other way around um and the baby's always on her chest and in the creche and she goes down and visits her and um her office is covered in bottles and dummies but yeah the, the Cora has very much fitted into Nina's existence at the moment um yeah, so she's she's not she won't she's not giving up her cool. Let's put it that way. She won't. <laughs> <laughs> so with Annabelle Scully playing her, how could she not look? <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like right? <laughs> we're not we're not going to see a like dishevelled Nina. Yeah. Oh no, right. you do not, see a bit of that, ah. but, but it's not. Yeah, not necessarily to do with the baby, but I can't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, there are moments where we see her. You know, not looking really. a bit rough yep yeah. <laughs> and she definitely like isn't absolutely smashing it and like oh know, god no um she's just prioritizing you know um design the baby gear she gets she still gets her nails done put it that way <laughs> yeah. uh, so then how does watching kind of their older sister hannah go through this um divorce impact them because it feels like a bedrock of a marriage that they they've had because they didn't have a, a great parent marriage to, to follow and their older sisters had like a, a, a decent marriage how does that impact them in this season what what abby has written in this series brilliantly is lot is the sisters on their own separate trajectories and ruth our mother um but at moments of like low low rock bottom horribleness they come together like a sort of swarm of not swarm like a <laughs> I tried to think of a good analogy Val uh, lions I don't know <laughs> on the plane of the I, you, know, you, you get what I'm t- what I you mean yeah. Yeah, we're like mag- they're like magnets to each other like any family is when there's yeah. trauma they go vroom, and they drop everything but they're very much in this series we have been written very separate high drama storylines and we are very much focused on when you watch it you'll understand why I mean it's f- you know big life stuff happening to all of them and so we don't I think when they announced they were separating last series that was the moment that they were they were in shock and I think it has rattled the whole family but definitely in series three we are very much more concerned with our own stuff for most of it I say um but there are also some clashes some really big clashes um particularly between Hannah and Rose at a later stage which uh and then Nina and Rose actually as well and Nina and Hannah we have a big oh yeah yeah there's a lot of fighting Um, (laughs) yeah but uh, I also one of the things I really like is that I think is really truthful is the phone chats in the split so even though we're all on our own little journeys we always have these quick com quick check-ins with each other like you do I don't I don't know if you mentioned you had a sibling and you've in that very kind of quick like what's happening yeah okay okay oh god oh god okay bye carry on um and I just I I really like that detail with Abby's writing because she links us all even though we're on this separate journey we're always we're always touching in with each other and in small but kind of really significant ways so um I've always read that and she carries on that um that in in series three Mm -hmm. absolutely um I was about to say one of my questions is 
I, I have sisters and the writing of the sisterhood is just so realistic and so real. How does it feel being a part of such an incredibly written show? Oh God. I mean, when we got these parts, it was, it was a big deal for, um, <laughs> it was a big deal for us. They're amazing parts. I think things have changed a lot in the last five years in terms of what's available on, on for us to play now. The parts are getting more complex and for ladies in their late thirties, um, I think, you know, it's the opportunities are getting more and more, but these parts were quite special when they came out. I remember reading the script going, oh my God, these are three dimensional, funny, flawed women. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I know you feel the same, Fiona, that we're, we felt very, very lucky to be a part of it. And, you know, we've grown together as a, as a cast and also with the, um, the, the producers and Abby and Abby's directing some of this series. Mm -hmm. We've been on that journey together and um, the bond that we have is, I mean, it's, it's rare. I mean, you do make friends on jobs, of course you do, but this is a rare job. And we were very, very lucky that the four central women love each other and and I think it's quite clear on screen that we do um and we know each other really well now and so it's very easy to to be on set together it's, it's lovely That's yeah lovely. and I, I I also agree that the that she writes it's no surprise that Abby um is close to her sister um and and her her family and I think that comes out in her writing um, her experience of family and her um, her perspective on it is is beautiful, I think, and um, it comes it comes yeah I I, I think I, I I loved it from the start too um, yeah that's all I have to say about that <laughs> so it must be hard saying goodbye then because this is the final season yes. yeah but we're not saying goodbye we we're we're, we're, we're mates saying. Now staying mates now we're in we're in each other's lives so it was sad the last the last shot yes that was we, really we sad. got into a lift and <laughs> I had the last line and then the door and then the lift said door closing and I literally was like <laughs> sobbing <laughs> to say that's not the last line of the show no that was the last scene we shot the yeah, last scene of the show is a wedding. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I'll Ooh. tell you who. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, thank you, ladies, for talking to us today. I, I can suspect this season is going to make us all cry and laugh and yeah. feel a lot of emotions. going to cry for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I'm excited for everyone to see it. I, uh, thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so thank much you. for talking nice to me. Nice to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.